Good day, everyone. Welcome to another video lecture by Mom Sheila. So for today's topic, we will be discussing about the types of plate boundaries. We are now on our week four of your quarter one module. Now we have this picture on the first slide for us to uh, be aware that last time we discussed about the, the plates, the plates uh, that actually moving on top of the uh, upper mantle region of the earth. And then we will be moving on today with a discussion on the different types of plate boundaries. If you are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Please do also give it a thumbs up and share it to your classmates and to other people who you do you think will also benefit from this video. So let's discuss about plate boundaries. So aside from these plates moving in different direction, you would like to take a look at the different kinds of plate boundaries. Now, why do we need to study plate boundaries? Studying plate boundaries is important because along these boundaries, deformation of the lithosphere is happening. So there is um, a change or there are changes that are happening along these boundaries. These geologic events have great impact not only on the environment but also upon us. There are actually three types of plate boundaries, the first type of which is what we call the divergent plate boundary. From the term itself, the term divergent would mean that the plates are moving apart or they are drifting away from each other, thus creating a zone of tension. As we can see here in the picture, there is actually uh, the movements of these two plates. Now, when these two plates are moving away from each other, you can see that it would create a crack at the middle wherein uh, the magma would come out. Actually, this would um, eventually create what we call the mid-ocean ridges, or we could also have um, rift valleys, just like in Iceland. So that is the first type of plate boundaries. We call it divergent plate boundary. Now, can you identify adjacent plates depicting divergent boundary on the plate boundary map that we have? So, in this picture, we can actually identify several divergent plate boundaries as depicted by the arrows, these black arrows. And we can see in this map that the divergent boundaries are actually formed by these yellow lines. So if we have two adjacent plates that are moving away from each other, so they are actually forming divergent boundaries, plate boundaries. So let's take, for example, the first one we have here, the South American plate and the African plate. These two arrows are moving away from each other. Thus, we have this yellow line that would depict a divergent plate boundary. Another example would be the Australian plate and the Antarctic plate moving away from each other as well. Another example would be the Eurasian plate and the this one, the North American plate. Also, as you can see here, this yellow line, this one is ripping the uh, the mid-Atlantic uh, or creating the mid-Atlantic oceanic ridge. If you could also notice, this is the Iceland. The Iceland is actually the, that whole country is uh, the country is a, is a, actually a place where it's being ripped by this uh, mid-Atlantic oceanic ridge. And we can see a lot of evidences showing that these two plates are actually 
moving away from each other, thus creating a divergent plate boundary. Moving on. Okay, so now let's take a look at this um, Philippine plate and Eurasian plate. What is the direction of the motion of each plate? So let's move back. So for example, we have here the, the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate. If you could notice, instead of the arrows moving away from each other, these two arrows are actually pointing towards each other. So instead, what do you think would be the kind of uh, plate boundary that they are forming? So as, yes, you guess it right that the red lines are actually forming convergent plate boundaries, as you can see in the label of the map. Another would be, another would be the, um, this one, the South American plate and the Antarctic plate. As you can see, these arrows, these arrows are also moving uh, toward each other, thus we have this red line creating the convergent boundaries. Okay, so what do we mean by convergent plate boundary? This is an example of uh, adjacent plates wherein they would collide. So instead of moving away from each other, they would uh, move towards each other. As you can see here in the picture, so... Um, this is actually an example of convergent plate boundary. So you see these arrows, they are moving, they are bumping against each other. So we have a lot of geologic features that would form, just like the trench, volcanic uh, island arc. We can also experience um, a lot of earthquakes happening along these areas because of the collision that are or the collisions that are happening when they um, go uh, towards each other. Okay, so actually there are three kinds of convergent plate boundary. The first one is the convergence of two continental plates. So what would happen if, for example, if we have two continental plates that are colliding <clears throat> against each other? So in this picture, we can see here, now, what are being formed when two continental plates are colliding? So, we see here, this is a continental plate. This is another continental plate. So, they would bump against each other. Thus, as you can see here, there would be folds in folding. And this would lead to the formation of the mountain ranges. Now, what, why would that happen? Because the reason, no? is that when two continental plates meet head-on, neither is subducted. So last time in my discussion, we say that uh, the ones or the one that is heavier would um, subduct and there would be a melting of the area uh, in that area. So there would be no trench, no volcano, and definitely no island arcs are formed during this process instead the crust tends to buckle and be pushed upward causing formation of large group of tall mountains called mountain ranges and other highlands as we can again see in this picture since there would be no subduction zone there would just be collision so the, this area would just go up it would just buckle up and would lead to the formation of mountain regions, ranges, and other high, and other highlands. Okay, so about 40 to 50 million years ago, two large land masses, India and Eurasia, collided to begin the formation of the most visible product of plate tectonics, we call the Himalayas. Since subduction is impossible between two colliding plates, Pressure is released by pushing the crust upward and forming the Himalayas peaks, as we can see here in the picture. Now we understand how mountains or why mountains or mountain regions are being formed. 
as the plates are moving toward each other. Another type of um, convergent plate boundary is the convergence of two oceanic plates. So for example, we have here two oceanic plates that are bumping against each other. She can see this arrow. So what could happen? So since they are uh, both uh, denser, the one which is much more older and denser would actually subduct, as you can see in the picture. So one of, one of them would actually subduct beneath the, the other one, and that's why we have here trench being formed. We, we have what we call the subduction zone, and of course, there would be formation of island arcs as well. And a lot of earthquakes are happening in this area. Now, when two oceanic plates converge, as I've said, they also undergo the subduction process. This would give rise to the formation of volcanic island arcs, trenches, and generate shallow, intermediate, or deep earthquakes, as I've discussed earlier. Also, there would be strong earthquakes, earthquakes generated at the ocean floor and may cause displacements of large volume of water and launch big waves called the tsunami. Now, that's the reason why uh, in different places like Japan, Indonesia, Thailand, they would experience tsunami because um, they are actually located in two uh, converging oceanic plates, as we can see here in the picture. So if a strong earthquake would be generated in this area and would and that pressure would just um, flip flip that plate upward, it would generate a large amount of energy and would launch big waves we call tsunami and would kill a lot of people that would not be warm along that area. The third type of convergent plate boundary is the converging continental plate and oceanic plate. Now we're done discussing what are happening or what are being formed when two continental and two oceanic plates are converging. This time we would be discussing what would be happening, for example, when a continental plate and an oceanic plate would converge with each other. So as you can see here in the picture, this is um, an oceanic um, plate and we have here the continental plate. So they are moving uh, towards each other and then we can see here that of course there would be trench that would be formed, volcanic island or there is the subduction zone. Why would that happen? Because during the convergence of a um, oceanic plate and a continental plate, the denser oceanic plate again would slide under the continental plate. This process is called subduction. We have to remember that the oceanic plate is always denser than the continental plate. Thus, it would subduct, it would go down. And what would be the geologic events that would happen? There would be formation of volcanoes and trenches as well as occurrence of earthquake. No? There would be a lot of earthquake happening in that area, as we would see again in this picture. If you could notice, this oceanic crust, which is much denser, would subduct, and as it subduct, there would be melting of the rock layer in that area, allowing the magma to come out, and there would be formation of the uh, volcanic island arc. Of course, again, as I've said, there would be a lot of earthquakes happening in that area. Now, subduction gave rise to the formation of volcanic arcs near the edge of the continental leading plate, as we have seen in the picture. For the oceanic crust, one important fe geologic feature is formed, and that is the trench, also called submarine valleys. Now, ocean trenches are the deepest part of the ocean. And one famous um, trench is the Philippine Trench, one of the deepest, with a depth of 10,540 meters. Okay, 
So again, um, for this leading continental crust, there would be volcanic islands. And for the oceanic crust, or for the oceanic plate, there would be trench that would be formed along the subduction zone. Now, scientists believe that the Philippine archipelago is actually a product of the uh, convergent uh, plate boundaries of the Eurasian Eurasi Eurasi plate and the Philippine plate. That's why the whole archipelago is actually considered as volcanic island arc. We have a lot of active volcanoes. We experience um, earthquakes every now and then. And that would explain uh, why uh, the country is actually um, considered as also, um, for example, it's a, uh, the country has a lot of uh, volcanic activities, active volcanoes, earthquakes every now and then. Okay, so subduction of plate can cause earthquakes at varying depths. And that's why most part of the world would experience Occasional shallow earthquake where the focus is within 60 kilometer of the Earth's surface. So if you could uh, visit the um, that website that would track all the earthquakes, you would have a shallow earthquake, a deep earthquakes, a different uh, varying depths of earthquakes because of this subduction of plates happening at the convergent plate boundaries. Okay, and the last type of plate boundary is the transformed plate boundary. This type of fault boundary is actually happening where plates are sliding or grind past each other without diverging or converging. So instead of moving away from each other or um, moving towards each other, the plates in this um, adjacent plate, plate boundaries are just somehow they would just um, grind past each other, slide past each other. So as we can see in this picture, and as you can see in this arrow, the arrows are moving in opposite direction, but not um, creating uh, a divergent or convergent plate boundary. We call this transform fault boundary, okay? Now, can you identify adjacent plates depicting transform boundary on the plate boundary that we have here? Okay, so actually the best example of this plate boundary is the San Andreas Fault, which is bounded by the North American Plate and the Pacific Plate. If I'm not mistaken, uh, a movie was actually created, inspired by the San Andreas Fault. You can search it in YouTube. Now, if we could notice, this um, fault or boundary is formed by the movement of the North American plate and the Pacific plate sliding past each other, as indicated by these two red arrows. And um, since they are not uh, making any convergent or divergent boundaries and no other geologic um features are created but a lot of earthquakes are happening in this area that's why um strong earthquakes happened in in um, california in los angeles california that's because of the um, pressure created by the movement of these two plates the north american plate and the pacific plates now unlike um the all other plates that are actually not visible to our naked eye, we, we cannot see them as much as we can see this one. So this is actually a very um, evident um, feature of the transform plate boundary. This is the, San and the North American plate and the Pacific plate that is actually on the surface of the earth. So this is um, a clear evidence of the movement of the plate boundaries. So again, unlike other plate boundaries wherein we cannot see them, uh, this one is actually seen on the surface of the earth. So you can actually 
uh, step one foot on the other side of the plate and step one foot on the other side of the plate. Now for your task for this week, you are to complete the table by drawing for the second column, column rather, um, the different features of the conversion boundary, diversion boundary, and transform boundary. So hopefully by the images that I've shown a while ago, you will be able to draw the different um, images uh, uh, depicted by these different types of plate boundary. And hopefully you will be able to describe each type of plate boundaries in three words. So maybe more than three words you can describe them. And for your learning task three, of course, you have to study this world map. And you are to determine what type of plate boundaries exist in the following plates. If you just listen to my discussion, I mentioned already this plate boundaries and what type of plate boundaries is being created by these two adjacent plates. Okay, so you... If you, if you cannot remember, you can go back. You can go back to this video and try to um, locate or recall that specific part wherein I mentioned the type of plate boundaries that are being formed in this plates that are mentioned in your learning task number three. And lastly, just need to choose the letter of the correct answer in this short uh, multiple type question for your learning task okay so that would be all for plate boundaries for this week's uh, lecture I hope that you learned something I hope that you learned about the the result of the movements of these different types of plate boundaries and you will be able to identify what type of plate boundaries are being created by different types of uh, different adjacent boundaries okay, and that would be all for this week thank you very much for watching and again please do like share and subscribe hit that subscribe button and notification bell for upcoming uh, video lectures that would be helpful in answering your module thank you very much